Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, the end of September. There's one event we've been waiting for all year round. It's the AFL Grand Final. I mean, FIFA. I mean, FC. There we go. Man, I'm still not used to saying that. But anyway, how does FC 25 compare to last year's entry? Well, there's honestly a fair bit to cover. What can he do now? And that's flown in! Regarding regular 11 v 11 matches, FC 25 is largely a rehash of last year, besides a few new skill moves and the ability to professionally foul. Oh Though don't fret if you're on the fence about this one, FC 24's traditional gameplay was arguably one of the best iterations of the formula to date. While FC 25's gameplay is just as good, it's clearly opting for extra realism, and this isn't some bogus marketing spiel. Trying to pass while a player's back is turned, or kicking from an awkward position will most likely result in a turnover. Whereas shielding, which was consistent enough that you could casually stroll up the pitch, no problemo in FC 24, has now become more RNG dependent. Even with powerful forwards like Harry Kane, defenders will find ways to get a touch or just terminate a morph right through you. Classic. On that note, the usual FIFA jank is here too, though maybe a tad less than before. Keepers will forget that they're actually supposed to save goals, or they'll pick up the ball and then kick it straight out of bounds, because why not? The menus on PC have their moments too. Sometimes they'd appear blank for no reason, or hard crash when I tried to restart a match. Thankfully, these incidents were few and far between, but it doesn't make them any less annoying. Especially since the game can take a ridiculously long time to boot on PC. But I digress, before I go insane. What I did enjoy was the new 5v5 rush mode. This small court showdown can be a ton of fun and is the perfect replacement for Volta. While it had its charms, Volta ultimately ended up being an off-kilter mishmash of street and normal football that didn't quite commit to one direction or the other. In contrast, Rush is all about intense, end-to-end -end offense that keeps the basic core mechanics of FC25 intact. Maybe they could have added in a couple of mystery ball elements or some other wacky shenanigans, but I still think it's fantastic overall. At the start of a rush match, the ball is literally launched out of a cannon while you and an opposing team member run full steam ahead to gain possession, often tripping over each other in the most hilarious manner possible. It definitely lives up to its name, that's for sure. There are still offsides in rush, which neatly appear as tiny flags above players' heads in offense, but only past the final third. Another change is how bookings work. Anytime a player makes a big enough goof, they won't be sent off, only sin binned for a minute with a blue card. And like a standard game of football, when players are fouled in the box, they'll receive a penalty. Except in rush, players get to 1v1 the keeper from the attacking third and make them look like a silly sausage. I just wish the commentator would stop repeating the same sentences over and over. I know the usual commentators start looping their lines after a while, but it's so repetitive in rush mode that it's almost lazy. Despite EA saying that Volta won't be returning for FC25, it's still clinging on for dear life in the 3v3s. So at least the Volta fans haven't been fully forgotten yet, I suppose. Albeit, what's also cool about Rush is how it's implemented into manager career. When you decide to develop your academy, five players can participate in mini youth tournaments. This is a brilliant way to shake up the usual practice drills, all while testing out potential first team material. Plus, the youth players actually look like kiddos this time around, not 14-year-olds with fully grown beards. But before you even think of starting manager career, there are several components that you can tinker around with upon pressing the mode's name. From transfer embargoes to being literally unsackable, manager nerds can go buck wild here. You can even actively switch between the men's and women's leagues within the same career and now answer press conference questions based on tactical choices, the opponent's setup, and certain match statistics. In a similar vein, one of the best new additions I loved messing around with was player roles. This feature lets you specify which sub-position each player takes, determining where and how they'll operate and the pros and cons of doing so. It may take some good old trial and error, though you'll eventually find the setup that suits your style of foot meets ball. 
The manager career interface is also notably more streamlined than before, with the social media and comments feed replacing the newsreel, alongside a bold suggested task list that's much easier on the eyeballs. I just can't understand why EA won't let us play this mode online. I'm going to have to find Aladdin's lamp at this rate. Sheesh. But speaking of wishful thinking, FC25 lets fans step into the shoes of some of the greatest footballers in player career. Icons including the likes of Zidane, Beckham and Henri can be slotted into any team, kicking all sorts of modern butt once they arrive. However, it's practically redundant straight out of the gate. Since they're megastars in their own right, it inherently removes that gradual rise to glory progression you'd expect from player career. And while live start points will be arriving at a later date, a mode that lets you experience famous football moments, there isn't much of an incentive to hang out here at launch. Back on the gameplay side of things, one aspect I haven't mentioned yet is how the new FC IQ system will suggest different D-pad tactics as a match continues. It'll try to recommend the most appropriate formation, along with a strategy like kick and rush to get the ball forward, or park the bus to go all vintage Jose Mourinho. I tended not to alter my attacking or defensive strategies in past entries, as I wasn't sure if it would mess up my team. Albeit, in FC25, I felt a lot more confident doing so, since it highlights which players it affects the most, and you can instinctively feel a relevant shift in momentum afterwards. In terms of PC and online performance, the game runs quite smoothly, even with crossplay enabled. While Australia is notorious for its shoddy, koala-paced internet, I was still able to pull off some elaborate, messy dribbles into the box. Obviously, it's not the same as yelling at each other on the couch, though the online latency isn't super noticeable. That being said, my brain struggled to handle the new highlighter replay system, Yes, you can chop up and add little effects and such to create cool highlight videos, but you might need to take a few deep TLC breaths while you're doing it. You'll see for yourself when you try it. FC25 turned out to be a pretty solid package. Even if it's mostly the same gameplay-wise as last year, the focus on more realistic football in both traditional 11v11s and Rush makes swapping between both modes a breeze. However, that typical FIFA jank still looms in the background, with some seriously strange goalkeeper behaviours and consecutive tackles that all too conveniently just happen to set up goals. The new player role system adds depth and specialised strategy into the mix, though the inclusion of player icons feels less impactful at launch, considering that the live start points feature isn't available yet. The game does run steadily on PC, both online and off, although a couple of weird menu glitches and crashing issues can occur at times. While there are several welcome innovations, much of FC25 feels like smaller steps rather than a major evolution, but it's still a mega fun football sim nevertheless.